very mysterious. It's quite hard to explain. A lot of it is just instinctive, I think. A lot of it is just a sense of knowing when you're getting close to the, the, the tone of the voice, but also the essence of the person. What you see in here is almost the last thing you do. The, 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 the main chunk of it is just about the energy of that person. So that um, you, you just capture their, you capture their spirit and their drive and everything that's identifiable about them. And then uh, just add on the top coat of the voice sounding as it should be. And hopefully, hopefully you get there. And then the more you do it, the more it runs in, the more it becomes smooth and established. And th that, that's where you want to get to with, the, with, with those characters. So do you know how you do it or is it just instinct for you? You can feel when the instinct is starting to work. But to get there, what you have to do first is lots of listening, lots of watching of YouTube clips and just um, don't really go into a scrutinizing mode, first of all. Just watch and watch and watch and see what washes over you, see what sticks to your instinct. Um, and then there's a stage after that, a bit like learning a new language, listen, repeat, listen, repeat. And then you can try it out on, on some friends, maybe drop in the odd catchphrase here and there, see if they react. Also, it's important to know when to leave it, when to just turn away and just let your subconscious just percolate with what you've watched and just let it sit there. I think that's why I love to do the Doctor Who characters so much because I've watched them all my life, all my days, um, and just watched and enjoyed without trying to learn them as such. So when you come to have to do um, a target novelization or a big Finnish audio drama, it, it's lovely the way that they are just there. Um, so yes, that's, that's very rewarding indeed. Lots of people... Uh, seem to impersonate Tom Baker really well. He's such a unique voice. Uh, yeah. Does that make him easy to impersonate? Or uh, are there, is everyone sort of on the same level when it comes to picking up their mannerisms? I think, I, he's, I mean, he's so distinctive, so powerful. And that, uh, that eccentricity, you know, that amazing eccentricity that you hear and those wide eyes and that great velvety boom. I find it very interesting when Tom is talking uh, as an actor and talking about many plays he's done and people he's worked with. Um, yes, Hedda Gardner. <laughs> oh, there's just something so joyful to relish in with that. And whenever anybody impersonates Tom Beck, you find there's always that power there. There's always that great eccentricity. There's always that sense of any words that you say in that voice, it will just sound, it will just sound marvellous. Any word, the sirens of audio, you see? <laughs> it just gives that, uh, that wonderful velvety boom. Um, anyone who impersonates Tom will have that sense of power at the heart of it. Power and eccentricity. You just seem to switch into a voice immediately. No, no, how, much, how much practice do you do to get a voice? So, I mean, Tom, you've been doing for years. That's probably the first voice I would have heard you do. Um, but how, how long did it take you to, does it take you to perfect a new voice? It might, uh, if you're learning a topical character for a show like Dead Ringers or uh, something like that, you might just watch and perhaps two or three days will get you started. Um, and you'll be able to deliver it for a topical sketch. But the more you do, after, after two weeks, it'll be really settled in there, like a, like a comfortable pair of shoes that you've been walking around in a bit, and it starts to feel more natural. Um, after years, it just becomes something like that. You just click an imaginary switch in the back of your neck, and they appear. See that person in your mind's eye, and they just, uh, they just appear. And characters like, like Tom Baker are very much like that, just click like that. Uh, whenever, I, uh, whenever I take on the voice of John Pertwee, 
I can remember now he has a very sharp resonance across the void beyond the mind. And uh, no syllable is wasted. There's that great warmth. And I think one's body language becomes uh, very much stronger, very more elegant, uh, very more poised. Um, and they're, they're just so magical. You just see them in the mind's eye and, and the tone of voice follows. I think one of the masterclasses of uh, audio books you did was The Five Doctors. That reading was, that reading was extraordinary. And it, it's, it just captured me the whole time. Because, I mean, it's one of my, I love the show. It's one of those, you know, one of the ones I always go to because it's just a feel warm. But listening to you read that and just switch from character to character was extraordinary. Is it, is it hard to be in a studio? How much preparation did you do before that? Do you have, because you're doing so many impersonations, do they give you more time or do you just have to get it out like normal? Yes, you just you just go along like normal. You know, you might just stop and do a bit of a gear change. I recorded that, I, th I think it was 2016, 2017. I listen back to it now and, you know, there's certain voices that are more settled in now because I've done them more often. I'd love to give it another go. Uh, you know, you learn a software update sort of a thing. Um, but they, they give you the text uh, a good few months before or a good few weeks before, and you just read through, you annotate it, you mark out where all the characters are, um, and you, you get familiar with the with the written word. You, you get familiar with with the, the phrasing and so on. So you're not reading it fresh, brand new for the first time. You, you know the flow of the words. Um, Terence Dix is writing. It, it's beautiful to deliver in an audio way because um, Terence Dix had this just this wonderful gift and instinct for just encapsulating the meaning and just bringing it so vividly to life with the most beautiful economy of words. Um, so, so just incredible for that. Uh, and to walk through this amazing story that I, I watched that live as it went out for the first time in 1983. And that, that's another story that I, I go back to time and time again. And just to bring it to life, the chance to live it yourself. You know, I can see the uh, Brigadier walking along. I was the second doctor. Yes, we never did bother much about rules, not as I remember. Um, great balls of fire. You know, all the phrases that, uh, uh, don't look down. <laughs> Judge Jeffries, oh, definitely Newton. There's no limit to Isaac's genius. <laughs> Sorry, mustache. They're all there. <laughs> and, um, and to walk through them. Is a wonderful thing. I consider myself very lucky to have had the chance to do that. The the voice that blew me away with your reading of the Five Doctors was the Anthony Ainley Master. Very, very. It was. I I had to do a double take because it was it was it was that good. So uh, when you recently did the when you recently did the Terror of the Master, uh, or the Masterful Masterful you're in, wasn't it? So uh, how how difficult was Ainley to do, and that. That must have been a joy for you as well. Oh, I, I couldn't believe it when uh, I had the chance to do that one. Brilliantly written by Trevor Baxendale, who knows and loves that Third Doctor unit era so, so well. Um, and it really did feel, I think, like a story that would have occurred somewhere between the, the Green Death and the Time Warrior. And it's, it's very interesting in, in those uh, stories, the sort of the differences between those masters, the Delgado master and the Anthony Ainley master. And I always say that um, the Roger Delgado master has um, an ominous sense of brooding, I call it, and the mouth shape. It's very triangular. I am the master. You will obey me. Obey me. It takes it into this triangular thing. Whereas the, uh, the Ainley master, Anthony Ainley's portrayal, has uh, an elegant malevolence, is how I like to describe that. And rather than being triangular like the Delgado master, it's sort of the shape of the mouth goes over here. One of my predecessors. <laughs> You can get me into the zone. There's those lovely mouth shapes that go on. 
Um, and that's a lovely difference between them. I always found it uh, fantastic to see the Anthony Ainley master with the third doctor. That was fantastic, you know, given what we know and love about the relationship between the doctor and the master, particularly in the Pertwee era, uh, to, to see Anthony Ainley and John Pertwee together. That's why I might have known you did the hide all this. For once, I'm here to help you. You help me. I've never heard such nonsense. <laughs> Just really delicious stuff, isn't it? Really delicious. Yeah.